This over here is the 11600K iFi, and this does not support PCIe Gen 5 speeds. This over here is 3rd Gen Ryzen 9 3950X, and this also doesn't support PCIe Gen 5 speeds. And this is a PCIe Gen 5 M.2 SSD, and I will show you how you can get Gen 5 speeds on those CPUs, it's gonna be like magic. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So then, how is it possible to get this SSD full speed on these CPUs, well, the magic actually is this here. This GPU allows you to do that. And you might be saying, oh, you completely lost the plot. Oh, let me explain to you. So, what well, this over here is an RTX 4060 Ti from ASUS, and this has an M.2 slot. As you can see, this GPU, when we turned it around, voila, there is an M.2 slot on the GPU. And this here is still PCIe Gen 4 slot. So this card is a PCIe Gen 4 card. It's not PCIe Gen 5 card, but you're still gonna get PCIe Gen 5 speeds. Bear with me one second. Usually the other non M.2, you know, RTX 4060 Ti's have only X8 card slot. So which means that basically you'll have only this bit of the card that has traces of Gen 4 lanes to the GPU. And the rest of it is just empty basically they don't do anything but if you look very closely here you can see traces of this second part here going to this m.2 slot in there you can see it in there and then also on the other side there so here's the amazing thing pca gen 5 x4 slot is exactly the same as pca gen 4 x8 slot so the rest of the eight lanes here instead of just wasting them because your motherboard's gonna support them anyway they're actually gonna give you an m.2 slot here that can be pca gen 5 speeds which oh stick till the end and i'll show you why this could absolutely change the next generation of gpus when they're coming out and i truly hope they're gonna do that so let's test this then so we've got the m.2 slot in here and you can see that there is this heatsink kind of metal there and this is directly connected to the heatsink over there. So the main heatsink of the GPU is here. So your whole M.2 is actually getting cooled by this massive heatsink and two fans. And the 4060 Ti is not very power consuming and very hot card. So to add extra heat onto the heatsink is not going to saturate it at all. Instead, it's going to keep your M.2 very, very cool. And also the M.2 is the wrong way around in a way so that your you know, top of the card goes actually on there and then you have another heatsink. So inside the packet, you also have the cover for this and there's a heatsink on top there, as well as a little screwdriver. And then we have another thermal pad over here. So what you wanna do is get this thermal pad, okay? This is quite a thick thermal pad and we are going to put that over there just like that then you take the other plastic off as well and we're going to slot our m.2 in here so this is the corsair mp7000 this is a gen 5 x4 uh, m.2 ssd and this is not particularly the fastest there's a lot faster ones but this will get just slightly less than 10,000 megabytes per second which is more than gen 4 what we can get so upside down I'm going to plug it in and I can see that it's already making contact with the thermal pad. I'm going to slot it down and then our heatsink cover that's going to go on top. I'm going to pull this off here as well and then let's see which way it goes. Yeah, see the performance and quiet mode switch there. I'm going to leave it in there and as you can see, just line these screw holes up. And now it's all screwed in. Bear in mind, all of this back here 
is actually metal as well so we're gonna get some heat dissipated here from the back side as well so whether you've got a single or dual sided m.2 ssc you're gonna get it cooled on both sides obviously one side the main side will be cooled a little bit more than the back side but both of them will be cooled now you can use gen 4 m.2 ssds there or any other as well but the gen 5 will give you the best performance basically so now the rest of the card is just the dual slot card and normal rtx 4060 ti that you might have seen from asus by the way if you're thinking that this card is a little bit expensive compared to the non m.2 slot card if you are a creator and you're using adobe creative cloud you get actually one month for free adobe creative cloud which costs roughly around 60 dollars so take that off the price of the card and it might be a little bit more affordable or it might make a bit more sense for creators if you're using creative cloud so Let's slot this into our test bench in here. Okay, now power is on and let's turn it on. Boom. Once you have put your card in, make sure that you go into the BIOS. Just hit the lead button when restarting the PC and there we go. So we have to change a few settings in the BIOS in order for this to actually work. If you don't know where to find your settings, your BIOS most likely will have some kind of a search function. So type into the search PCI hit enter and it will show you some of these settings here there's a few things that we need to do here even though i am using a 13600k on a z790 pro art motherboard platform here which does support gen 5 what i have done is this pcie first slot in there i'm forcing it to use a gen 4 speed not gen 5 speed okay so i am making it exactly the same test setup as this 11th gen or a ryzen 3000 something cpu and then another very important thing that you need to change is the PCIe bandwidth bifurcation configuration, which needs to be X8 plus X8 or X8 plus uh, X4, X4, uh, which means that the top slot there, which is X16, so the 16 lanes of PCIe Gen 5 in my case going, but I'm forcing them to be PCIe Gen 4. This needs to be slot into two, PCA Gen 4 X8 and PCA Gen 4 X8. Now it can be PCA Gen 5 as well, but in our case, I want to showcase PCA Gen 4 because that will actually give us the magic of getting Gen 5 speeds on PCA 4 platform, if that makes sense. Now, once you've changed these settings, all you have to do is hit F10, uh, go back F10, and that will save your settings. And then you'll go into your Windows. Now, once you're in Windows, the first thing you might need to do in order to actually get this working is if you put a brand new m.2 ssd in there you need to initialize the m.2 which means that you need to go to um, format create and format hard disk partitions and you'll go in here and you'll find another one of these here that will be black you have to right click right click or initialize this or it might actually pop out with a question there do you want to initialize this disk and you have to like kind of set a drive letter for it if you don't know how to do that, I've got a video on the channel or Google it. Now, I've got this already initialized, so you can see that the MP700 is showing up here on my computer. But if we open GPU Z here, then you can see that our GPU is actually running PCIe X8 Gen 4 bandwidth, as you can see in here. This is this is that. So it's not PCIe Gen 5, as you can see. So that's our card. So where's the rest of the eight slots? So here's what we can do and test the actual speed. If we open Crystal Disk Mark, which is an SSD benchmark test, and here I've chosen E, which is our MP700. Okay, settings, NVMe, and start. If we get more than 7.5 gigabytes per second, 7,500 gigabytes per second, our SSD is running at Gen 5 speeds because Gen 4 maximum bandwidth is 8 gigabytes per second at for you know lanes and now you can see boom 9600 megabytes per second and you might be saying oh my goodness it actually works and it's true it works as long as your motherboard supports splitting the force first 16 slots to x8 x8 pca gen 4 you're gonna get pca gen 5 speeds even on ryzen 3000 or 11th gen or other cpu platforms that support pca gen 4 bandwidth now why is this such a revolutionary idea you might be saying well here's the thing if we have something the likes of an rtx 1490 here this uses pca gen 4 x16 gen 4 lanes but we're not fully utilizing that whole bandwidth there as well which means that the next generation gpus 
when the 5090 comes out, will still be most likely fine with X16 Gen 4 Blaine's PCIe bus interface for the GPU. But that is exactly the same as PCIe Gen 5 X8, which means that you could run the 5090, let's pretend this is a 5090 right now, you could run the 5090 with just half of these lanes here if they're PCIe Gen 5 X8 and would get the same bandwidth as Gen 4 X16, if that makes sense. And we could have the rest of the eight slots there free for some M.2 slots on the RTX 5090. Imagine you've got an RTX 5090 and in the back here you've got two slots of PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots and you can run them at full bandwidth because, you know, you've got that option in there. Or you could have four slots here of PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSDs that would all run X4 and get 7 plus something gigabytes per second if you wanted that as well. This could all be supported on the RTX 5090 or 5070 or 5060 Ti or something like that. But it would make more sense for the RTX 5090. As you can see, Asus is onto something here. All of the cards that are X8 slots, you could get the next generation speeds, which is interesting. And in theory, you could get a PCIe Gen 6 speeds on the RTX 5090 if you used all of the X8 kind of slots there and get PCIe Gen 6 speeds X4 on an M.2 slot, but your M.2 will not be that fast. No one's going to make that many or that fast M.2 slots. So I think it's interesting. We're kind of recycling the already kind of lost PCIe lanes that don't get used anyway and we're going to give use to them like this one here this is a recycled uh, pca gen 5 slot that you get on here and you can actually add a pca gen 5 m.2 on a very budget system for example or an older system that doesn't support pca gen 5 but you can still get it which a genius thing now i wish there was a little bit more higher end gpus that would do that like a 4070 4070 ti something like that that would be interesting and now as you can see our crystal disk mark here is completing the test and as you can see we are getting more than 9.6 gigabytes per second read speeds and more than 8.7 gigabytes per second write speeds so if we go here as you can see our m.2 ssd is very cool cool as a cucumber 34 degrees celsius and we are writing on it quite a lot here as you can see no problem whatsoever because it's got a massive heat sink in there it is only slightly warm in here when doing this test. So as you can see, Asus is onto something very special here. If you want to check this out, I'm going to leave it linked in the description below. And if you're a creator and you want to build yourself the best bang for buck creator PC, then there's some free guides in the description below. Go check them out. Whatever your budget is, there's one for you. I'll explain everything there. To be honest, at first I thought this is a little bit of a gimmick, but I am really impressed with this. This is a great idea and I can see this... Uh, coming more and more into the market with the next generation of GPUs. I hope they do. Let me know if you'd like this feature to come into the 5000 series Nvidia cards, for example, or AMD cards. I would. Would you?